Today's lecture we're going to cover how to find out if the mixture of two substances will, has reacted. Uh, in an exchange reaction, also known as a double displacement, you have a metal and a non-metal reacting with another substance composed of a metal and a non-metal so that they exchange partners. So AX plus BY will give you AY plus BX. Uh, an example will be where ferric, ferric, three sulfates is minus two each, so six, so yeah, this has to be ferric. Ferric sulfate is reacting with lithium hydroxide to form lithium sulfate and ferric hydroxide. We balance the equation by making sure that the same number of elements appear on both sides. So there are two iron atoms here, and there have to be two iron atoms on the right. Three sulfates, three sulfates, six lithium atoms, six lithium atoms, six hydroxides, and six hydroxides. So the, the equation is balanced. Uh, when we do the reaction, if we were to say, if we were given only the first half of this reaction, how would we find out what these two products are? Well, we would exchange partners. The metal from this compound, from this molecule, would, would couple with the um, anion of the other molecule. And the metal from this molecule would couple with the anion from the first molecule. So that's how you get those two products. But then how do you determine if you actually had a reaction? Uh, well, the key point here is to decide if one of the products is insoluble. So if you know, if you're familiar with some of the rules of solubility, uh, and you know that this substance is not soluble, then you can say, yes, the reaction has taken place. So as it turns out, hydroxides of iron are not soluble. So that will be a reaction. Now I'll give you two other examples where one of them, there is no reaction, and in the second, there is a reaction. In the first example, we mix two soluble salts, potassium nitrate and sodium chloride. And the result would be that a mixture of potassium chloride and sodium nitrate. But you'll notice that all of the thing, all the substances listed are in aqueous form. So actually, no reaction has taken place. This would be a clear solution. This would be a clear solution. And when you mix those two clear solutions, you get another clear solution. Nothing happens. Because all of these things will stay in the aqueous state. They'll stay apart in the solution. They won't actually coupled together to form a new salt. But now let's look at an example of a, a classic reaction that's used to illustrate um, a double displacement reaction. When you mix plumbus nitrate, lead to nitrate, with potassium iodide, you do get a reaction. You get a yellow precipitate forming that then falls to the bottom of the beaker, and then the top of the beaker is clear, the rest of the beaker is a clear solution. What is that yellow precipitate? It's plumbus iodide. Turns out that I, um, heavy metal salts of halogens are insoluble. So plumbus iodide is an insoluble salt. That's definitely a reaction. When you see, when you mix those two clear solutions, this is a clear solution. That's a clear solution. But when you mix them together, you get a swirl of yellow precipitate forming, and that yellow precipitate is the plumbus iodide. So that's how we can tell if a reaction has happened. You have a change of color, a change of temperature, uh, or an evolution of gas. In this case, we get a solid forming that has a, a, a yellow color to it. This part is still uh, remains an aqueous solution. The potassium nitrate doesn't form a precipitate. It actually stays dissolved in the water. Here's another example. We have uh, mercurous nitrate. And it's mercurous because the, the charge on this is plus 2. Mercuric nitrate would be a plus 2 charge on 1 mercury atom, where the mercurous nitrate will be a plus two charge on two mercury atoms stuck together. So this uh, this has the lower charge per mercury atom. That's why it's given the mercurous designation. So it's the, it would be like mercury one then. You could say this would be mercury two, using the modern way of naming. So we have mercurous nitrate being mixed with potassium fluoride. And the, if you do a double displacement reaction on it, you will get uh, mercurous fluoride and potassium nitrate. And if you look up the solubility of mercurous fluoride, I think what happens is it actually breaks down when it's exposed to water. But there is a reaction. And this remains soluble, and that would be your salt. Actually, what happens when you put that in water is you get mercuric oxide, I believe, mercurous oxide. 
but there is a reaction. The other type of reaction you should be aware of is acid-base reactions. Uh, typically, uh, the example you would want to use, the easiest example to remember is when you mix a strong acid with a strong base. The result is you get salt and water. So if you mix hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, you'll get sodium and chlorine combining to form sodium chloride, and the H plus from the acid and the OH minus, the hydroxide from the uh, base, will combine to form water. And uh, the uh, Arrhenius definition of an acid is a substance that releases uh, H plus in aqueous solution, whereas a base is a substance that releases hydroxide in aqueous solution. That's the first and most primitive uh, form of definition for uh, acids and bases. And sometimes you'll get a reaction between an acid and a base that will result in the formation of gas. And the example of that would be the reaction of hydrochloric acid with sodium bicarbonate. The result is you get sodium chloride and carbonic acid. But carbonic acid is an unstable substance. It quickly breaks down into water and carbon dioxide. In fact, you can form carbonic acid by adding carbon dioxide to water. That's, how, that's the basis of carbonated water. The CO2 will combine with water to form that substance, the carbonic acid. So it's an equilibrium process. Both of those things will exist in, in the same, at the same time in an aqueous solution. The net, the net reaction is that the carbonic acid breaks down into the uh, hydrogen carbonate, into the bicarbonate anion, and an H+. And then that further breaks down into water and carbon dioxide. Another type of reaction you should know about is the oxidation reduction reaction. These are reactions in which electrons are traded by uh, elements or chemicals. Electrochemical reactions are used in batteries to produce electricity. They also can be a form of a scourge for automotive manufacturers because if you combine certain types of metals, they make very poor combinations. They lead to very rapid corrosion. And some car manufacturers have overcome this difficulty by using, for example, plastic rivets to hold body panels of cars together so as to avoid coupling metals that can produce electrochemical reactions. Um, when, uh, if you make a fence, for example, and you use treated lumber, you have to use special screws to combine with the, the fence, otherwise you'll get very rapid corrosion of the screws and they'll, they'll, they'll form ugly trails of corroded um, material streaming down the holes where you put the screws in. So you would use deck screws with um, with a fence to avoid, they're specially coated to avoid reacting with the chemicals that are used to preserve the wood. Another thing you should be aware of is the activity series. It's a list of metals arranged in order of decreasing ease of oxidation. So an activity series aids in the prediction of single displacement reactions where one metal replaces another. And there are several uh, videos on the playlist that talk about uh, the activity series. <coughs> 